Dave wasn't a good man. Like Dave was one of the best ever. Dave was always trying to figure out how do I become better, a better version of myself. I'm always pushing and striving to become better. Most of you guys wouldn't be listening to this, you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be part of this community, you wouldn't be successful entrepreneurship it wasn't for the fact that Dave sacrificed so much. But Dave, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> this is your chance. I want people to know how amazing you are, because I know it. I know your wife knows it, your kids know it, but um, the world needs to know it. Hey everyone, this is Russell Brunson, and um, today I'm recording a special podcast. And this is one I've been really nervous to record and to talk about, but today I wanted to do a podcast talking about um, about Dave Woodward, one of my closest friends ever, uh, the CEO of ClickFunnels, someone who, uh, if you follow me or follow any of the, you know, any of the ClickFunnels family, you know that he passed away and. Um, that's what this podcast is about. I want to talk about Dave in a very happy, fun, exciting way, tell stories about him and his life. I've been trying to like think through this and write out notes and a million different things. And as I keep trying to do that, realizing it's just delaying me from, from just doing this. And so, um, I'm just going to jump into it without notes, um, which is kind of a outline of my head of where I want to go. And a couple things, um, I had a chance to speak at his funeral, which was, um, just a really special experience, a moment for me. And uh, I got permission from his family to be able to share that with you guys. And so I'm playing that probably towards the end here. And I want to start with um, actually a post I made on December 6th. So December 6th that morning, obviously we've known, uh, it's been 18 months that we found out that Dave had the tumor and he's been fighting this battle. And there were times of like you know, high highs where we feel like we you know, conquered the world and times where it was tough and back and forth and back and forth. And it's weird though, because like, I don't know, Dave's invincible. You know, I always thought for sure there was no way he wasn't going to win. For those of you guys who are, yeah, I had this crazy trial that happened uh, six weeks ago today, and I ended up having a brain uh, tumor and crazy stuff of the cancer. And so I'm staying here to take care of the cancer and the radiation, all that stuff. And it's crazy though, you know, the last month or so as we got closer, it always went from, you know, Dave always talked about like, my goal is to get back on top and be better than I was before. I'm gonna, you know, Dave at his core, always shooting for the stars and working towards it and trying to figure out how to get there. And about a month left, uh, he started seeing things change. And it was interesting, his messaging shift and transition from like, I'm gonna try to do this thing to like, it's okay. Like I'm getting things ready. And, and talking about like, you know, the afterlife and, and death and, it, and you could tell that he'd gotten a spot where he had accepted it. It was interesting to, to watch that transition and it also gave me some pieces as it got towards December 6th. In fact, uh, we had one very scary moment that ended up being, uh, for me, probably the biggest blessing in the matter. I was at wrestling practice and I got out of wrestling practice. This is probably a week prior. And on my phone, there's a text from, uh, from Dave's family saying basically like, hey, he just woke up. He told us he has an hour to live. And if you want to say your final goodbyes, like now's the time. And I don't know how to, how do you react to something like that? Like. I'm in wrestling, you get out of wrestling practice, I'm racing home, jumping in the shower, trying to get clean. And and uh, it was just one of the most beautiful, uh, spook beautiful moments. Like everyone who was in the room, he had a chance to go and, and give them some closure. And you know, during that time, he'd been struggling to speak and struggling to, you know, and it was crazy because during the time he was able to look at each person and say something so profound and so um, important for them to hear, I think. Oh, I was hoping this wasn't gonna get emotional for me, but. Um, anyway, one, one of the, uh, the thing he told me is he grabbed me close and looked me in the eyes and said, you changed my life. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, typical Dave humor, he's just like, all right, I'm going to heaven, love you guys, we'll see you, you know, and he like, lay down and he kind of fell back asleep and all of us were looking at him and watching, you know, his chest breathe and we're just like, he's going to stop right now, like, what's going to happen? It was just like so much, so much fear, so much, you know. We sat there for probably 30 minutes or so, and then uh, the family decided they wanted to have a prayer, and one of the most beautiful prayers I've ever heard in my life, basically saying it's okay, and like, you know, we're so grateful for time with our father, and you know, if you're ready for him to have you back, like, we're okay with that now too, and and the prayer got done, and we all sat there, and I think part of us thought during the prayer he was gonna pass away, and then we looked over afterwards, and he was still breathing, and then typical Dave, typical Dave, you see his little finger starts starts moving and he's like, I'm still here. <laughs> but I think it's a ball frustrated. Ah, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be. I wanna go back to my room. So we get him up and we walk him to his room and for me it was just such a um 
So I feel like it's gonna be okay. And so anyway, December 6th, when I got the, the message in the morning that he had passed, it was just like, you know, we had that day, a crazy thing, we're filming all this stuff and everything's supposed to be happening. It was just, everything stopped and like, I don't know what to do. And I was just like, I just need to go home and write something. I don't, I don't even know what I need to write. I just need to go home and write something. So I remember going home and I sat there on Facebook trying to make a post. And it took me know, two or three hours to kind of, to know what you want to say. And I don't even know if it was the right thing to say, but I want to read what I said. And hopefully it'll be helpful for some of you guys. If you study the hero's journey, there are seven character archetypes. One of those archetypes is the ally. The ally is the character who assists the hero in their adventure because any adventure worth pursuing is too difficult for one person to overcome alone. Frodo had Sam Wise Gamgee, Joseph Smith had Hiram, and I had Dave Woodward. Dave entered my life at, a very, at the very beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. Looking back now, I know that he was a gift from God to be beside me as I tried to climb an impossible mountain. Over the years, we've shared the highest highs. All the crazy click funnel stories over the year have all involved Dave, but also the lowest lows. There are many nights at two or three o'clock in the morning, long after everyone else had gone home and gone to bed, that Dave and I were still at the office fighting battles for a cause that we believed in. I remember one particularly stressful night around Christmas time during one of our super late night, early morning work sessions, telling him that if I had to go to war and I could only pick one person to go with me, it would be you, Dave. This morning, Dave passed away after an 18 month long battle with cancer. 18 months ago, I walked into his office just minutes after he had found out about the tumor and this giant of a man was on his knees talking to his heavenly father. He told us that if this cancer brings more people closer to Christ, then I will do it. I had a chance to walk with him during his journey and hear stories about dreams and visions he had about Christ and him spending time with others who had passed on before him. In his family's post today, they said that one of the last things he did was open his eyes and said, it really is forever. It's a party on their side and I have work to do. I have no doubt that he had a chance to see a glimpse of eternity and if nothing else, came back one last time to help strengthen our faith in our Savior Jesus Christ and our ability to be together as families again someday. Dave is the greatest example I've ever known. He has an amazing wife who loves him. He has great kids who adore him. He built a company that's changed lives of millions of people around the world, and he passed away true to his faith. He won. What more could you want in life? And now because of Dave, we all have a standard to live up to. I want to see him again. I want to be with him again. I want to be like him. I'm committed to growing closer to Christ because of Dave. It really is forever. Through him, Jesus Christ, we can be together forever someday. I started this post by saying that Dave was my ally, but as I'm finishing it, I'm realizing that the whole time he has been my guide. You know, Dave and I used to talk about the hero's journey all the time, and it's interesting because, you know, in my mind, like, I'm the hero, and I'm doing this thing, and I'm going on this conquest, but everyone's journey, they're the hero, right? But it's interesting because in your own journey, you're the hero, and you're trying to, to conquer this insurmountable path, but in other people's journey, you're their ally, or their guide, or their, you know, sometimes you're the person that's fighting against them, and it's just interesting, and, um, and so was, as I was thinking about the archetypes, like, yeah, Dave was the ally, he was there every single time, every war I went into, he was there sitting next to me, every hard conversation, everything that was struggling, he was there every single time. But also at the same time, like he, in many aspects was the guy, like he was taking me where I was supposed to go, like helping me to become who I needed to be, helping me to remember God and Christ, where a lot of times for me, I would get so caught up in, in other things, I would forget about that. You know, and Dave so many times was like, hey, this click for things, like it's not just the company, like there's something bigger, something more important, something we're doing here, something special, something spiritual. And uh, him and I both believe that at our core and our soul. It's why we spent so much time and energy doing these things. And so I just want to kind of share some more Dave stories. Um, I'm not going to share the story how we met because I talked about that at the funeral. So I'll share that at the end of this. I remember one of the first things that happened, we, um, I had done a, a promotion way back in the day called the Online Market of the Year. We got like 30 or 40 gurus or experts to interview. In fact, the first time I interviewed Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer and all these people to be part of this thing. And I remember we got it done. Dave hauled us. He was like, this is awesome. I want to do this well. And so... He took the concept, he, he licensed it, he did like the online network marketer of the year and he did a couple other ones. By the time I remember, uh, I think MTV Cribs was like the big thing at the time and Dave was like, I wanna make MTV Cribs but for internet marketers. And so he started this brand, this company called Legendary Marketers. Hi, my name is Dave Woodward. I'm the host of Legendary Marketers. You've probably seen me as I've been flying around the country filming some of the world's greatest internet marketers. And he got in a plane and he flew to all these people's houses. And I remember him fly to my house and show up the camera crew and they're filming us and interviewing me and I don't even remember what I said. I, I'm sure I thought I was pretty cool at the time and you know, looking back now, I was this dorky little kid. And again, for somebody that felt so connected to him, I wanted to do things, I kept trying to pull him into some of my crazy schemes and ideas all the time. I remember I bought bodyevolution.com and the trademark and I wanted to start a weight loss company. I'm so excited about this. And so initially um, we found some people from who were on the who had been on The Biggest Loser who I, I really enjoyed and connected with and wanted them to be the faces of the company. and. 
but I need help running it. So I asked Dave if he'd be interested. So he came in and he was helping me run this company. And it's funny because these, these people, they're such great people, but they'd gained a lot of weight since the show was over. And so every time we meet with them, like, okay, you have to lose weight again because you're the faces of this fitness company. Like, okay, we're going to do it. They come back three months later, fly back out. They haven't lost any weight. And I'm like, what are we doing? They've had the frame conversation like, hey, it's the deal, you guys. Like, you're heads of a weight loss company. You have to lose weight or we have to cut you. And I'm like, how do you say that? But he would always have the hard conversations I was too scared to have. Like, again, as my ally, like, okay, Russell's too scared to have this. I'll have the brutal conversation. You know, but all these little companies never, they never took off. Like, I think he was waiting for like, what's something that's going to take off? I can be part of Vigor. And then um, when ClickFunnels came about, I remember Dave's like, I want to be part of this. Like, how do I be part of what you're doing? I'm like, like, what do you mean? He's like, I want to be part of this. So like, like, well, I don't, like, do you want a job? Like, I'm like, yeah, I know you make really good money. Like, I can't afford to pay you like a good salary right now. And he's like, I don't care. I just want to be, I want to be part of this. My name's Dave Woodward. I'm from Marietta, California. And I've had the opportunity of knowing Russell for about the last eight years. It's been a crazy ride. Best decision I've ever made is spending time with Russell and getting to know him better and following all of his marketing stuff. So. Dave had a great gig at the time. He's making insane amounts of money doing this real estate coaching, all sorts of stuff. And I was like, I can't replace what you're making now. He's like, I don't care. He was still in California. He'd work remote during the time. And we pay him whatever we were able to, and he was just going there, figuring out how to serve, how to grow things. And um, within a, a very short period of time, we're like, we need to figure out a way to make him more of a partner. And so we brought him in and gave him equity in the company. You know, he would come fly out, you know, once a month, the boys to be part of like the energy and the excitement and be part of it. They fly back home and you could tell he was so anxious. He wanted to be, he wanted to be in the heat of it all the time. And so he would um, fly back and forth. And eventually after like, eight months or so, I think, he was like, I need to move to Boise. I gotta be there. This is the way, everything's happening. I gotta be part of it. I need to be in the middle of the energy. Proximity is power. I gotta be in the middle of it. And so he uh, got his family and they, they uprooted and they moved here to Boise to be part of it, to be in the middle of all of it, right? And then we were together every day for, man, six, five or six years. Like anytime I'd go to any trip, he was there. He wanted to be there around the energy, around this stuff, like everywhere the things are happening. Uh, years I wrote Dotcom Secrets book, I swore I would never write a book again. Like I refuse, like, I'll never write a book again. Like it's the worst thing in the world. And he always wanted me to like, he's like, this is so good. Like people need this. And like, he was so passionate about my work, which is like, how often do you have someone who's like your biggest fan, like your biggest cheerleader, so passionate about what you're doing, right? And anyway, I remember we went to the Genius Network and we were sharing a room back at the time because ClickFunnels still hadn't grown to the point where we felt comfortable <laughs> getting two rooms. I remember that night I got invited to this dinner thing. So I went to this dinner and Dean Gracios, who I didn't know very well yet, were sitting across from me. We were talking and somewhere in the conversation, I remember what we were talking about. I remember thinking like, I need to write a book, it's called Expert Secrets, and like this was gonna be about. And we're getting back to our room, I was like, hey, um, when I was talking to Dean today, I had, I had a vision. He's like, what was it? I'm like, I gotta write a book. It's called Expert Secrets. And he's like, oh, freak, I got chills. Like, this is the great, like, he was, you know, just, he was so excited. He was like, all right, what do I gotta do to make this happen? And he's like, I gotta move heaven and earth. I gotta block everyone. Like, you need to be focusing. This is the most important thing you're possibly doing. And he was like, this blocker and protector, making sure I had the time I needed to be able to to create this thing and to do this thing. My dad was that way with wrestling. Like, uh, like he protected me to make sure that I could focus on the thing that was most important, like the calling, the mission, the thing we were trying to do. And Dave was the only other person that's ever done that for me. It was just blocking everything to make sure that I can do what I need to do. Every single day, despite the fact he had a million things on his shoulder, he'd come in every single day, not once in a while, every day, like, what can I take off your shoulders? And what can I get, take off your plate? And it's just one of the magical, the magical things about Dave. I remember he always wanted to learn. Like he wasn't the most, and I could say this to his face, he wasn't the most talented in most things. Like as I was writing the Expert Seekers book and talking about story, he loved it. He's like, I want to become a better storyteller. I want to become better. So he would, he would do these Facebook lives at first where he'd tell a story and then he's like, like it didn't work. It wasn't good. Like what was wrong? I'm like, Dave, you have to tell people not just the facts, but you have to tell about how you feel. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you have to open up and like you have to, when you're telling a story, you tell the feelings behind the story. And that was so hard for me. He's like, I have to learn. I have to learn. So he would try so hard to like open up and like, and like get to the feelings of things, right? And he'd get better and better. He'd be so proud of himself. Love you all so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing time. Thank you so much for all that you guys say and do to help me personally. We love you guys. Have an amazing day and we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. He's like, did you watch my Facebook live today? I'm like, of course I did. He's like, how was that? I'm like, dude, it was way better. Like the way you told your story, how you felt about this. Like those are the things that people need in story. You want to become better and better at it, right? He coached me. He was so coachable to try to learn it. When he eventually became CEO, he's like, I've never been a CEO before. I don't know how to be a CEO. So he found people who were great CEOs and he hired them and, and paid them for coaching. And like, he figured out what he wanted to do and then didn't have the skill set to do it. So when he got the skill set, most people are like, oh, I don't know how to do this or I'm not qualified or they just do a crappy job where Dave never did that. It was like, let me figure out how to become the best at this thing. I've learned that uh, the most important thing is focus on the people. And as you focus on the people, it all comes back. You know, I look at a world of people where 99.9% .9 of the people in the world are just content and lazy and just 
they are who they are, where Dave was always trying to figure out like, how do I become better, a better version of myself. Like I want to grow, I want to become better, I want to become the best at this thing. Even till like a month before um, before his passing, like it was like, my goal is to come back and be better than I was before. I want to be smarter. I want to be, I want to be able to, to retain these things. Like he was always pushing and striving to become better. Um, and that's what made Dave great in so many aspects. It's what, um, what I think everyone loved about him so much, um, was just his excitement. And so he was there serving other people and trying to grow so he could serve people more, not out of a selfish thing. And that's the, I think a lot of people, they, they serve selfishly. Like I'm doing this, I'm trying to get something. Dave wasn't trying to get something. He just knew there was something bigger. Uh, and for him, it all tied back to God, it tied back to Christ, it tied back to the things that matter the most. Um, he loved having his family involved. He loved seeing his wife build funnels and launch programs, watching his kids do the same thing. Like it was, things were never about him. It was always about the people that he was that were around him, starting with his family and then with the community and with other people. Um, you know, after the whole cancer stuff started happening, I think, again, it was one of those things, in fact, I remember like I was sitting in this room Right there is where, in the office right there is where I first saw it. I went in there and he was, you know, head down, praying as soon as he found out. Next day we sat right here. I uh, was in this chair, he was sitting right here as we were talking about it. And he was so scared, he didn't want to go in. And he was, he's like, I remember he's like, I want to be here for the library that we're building right here. Like all these visions, all of a sudden we're talking about like, he's like, we're building towards, I want to see ClickFunnels 2.0, I want to see all these things. And I remember how, how, how scared he was. And then the thing he said, he said it so many times throughout the years. It's like, if me going through this will bring more people to Christ, and I'm willing to do it. Like, I don't know if I could have said that. I don't know if I, you know what I mean? Like, give a Dave saying, I'm willing to take on this pain. Like, in the, the company here, Russell, I'm willing to take on this pain so you can do your mission, so you can write your books, so you can get it out there. Um, I'm willing to take on this pain. I'm willing to take things off your plate. I'm willing to stay late so that you can do what you're supposed to do. Um, I'm willing to take on this pain and suffering of going through cancer and these horrible things and losing um, these things because if it helps you to be able to do what you're doing, I'm willing to take on that pain for you. Like that's such a rare characteristic in, in a human, right? Like we talked about this at the at the funeral. Like Dave wasn't a good man. Like Dave was one of the best ever um, who's ever been on this planet, who's ever walked this earth. Um, and I know that because I saw it every single day, day in and day out, day in and day out. I saw him as he lifted the burden off my shoulders and took it upon his shoulders so that I could do what he thought was um, was important. I remember. One last story, and then we'll, we'll, I'll share. He has my presentation from his funeral. But, you know, I was, I had a goal. I wanted to be a New York Times bestseller. And like, that was a goal. And um, I didn't hit the dot com secrets. Extra secrets I didn't really try because I was so bitter about it. And traffic secrets I wasn't planning on trying. And he's like, no, he's like, you earned this. You deserve this. Like, you're better than the other hobby. You're like, you are going to get it no matter, like, whatever it takes. And he wanted that more than I wanted it. Um, so much so that I tried multiple times just to give up and then stop trying because it's not easy. Like, to, He's your one, but you hit New York Times list. It's not an easy process. First off, you got to write a really good book, and then you have to market it really, really well, and not in a traditional sense. Like, you know, we sold 80,000 copies in a week, but it didn't hit the New York Times list because you can't just sell 80,000 copies in a week through a funnel. You have to do a whole bunch of other things. So for me, to do that, I had to get on TV and radio and interviews and all sorts of, like, just, it was insanity. Um, and it was expensive, and it was hard, and it was like, I went about so many times, he's like, no, we're going to get this. You have to get this. Like, you earn this. Like, you you are going to be a New York Times bestseller. I'm like, ah. We kept trying, kept trying, and we missed the first week and the second week and the third week. The point where it was like I was I was beyond giving up. He's like, no. And after I think the fourth week is when we hit the list. And then he gave me celebrated me. It's like, dude, like we should be celebrating you, Dave. You're the one that, that made it possible. Like, but he didn't want to celebrate himself. He didn't want to talk about himself ever. He wanted to talk about everybody else. He wanted to be the one, the ally, supporting, serving, giving, and then giving the credit to other people. He'd be so annoyed that I'd talk about him this much right now. But Dave, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> this is your chance. I want people to know how amazing you are because I know it. I know your wife knows it, your kids know it, but um, the world needs to know it because like, we have the opportunity to be around greatness every single day. And even if people didn't see it, they felt it. I had a handicapped sister who passed away and the first person, you know, super, super close to me that passed away. And it's interesting because you look at someone whose handicap is like, there's this burden and this pro, you know, um, and after she passed away, like I had the realization, I was like, man, I had a perfect celestial person living with someone who was who had never sinned who had never made a mistake who was flawless like literally an angel sitting in my house every single day of my life i had a chance to grow up and have her sitting there every single day like how lucky was i to be able to see someone who who was as perfect as you can be on this planet and yes she was handicapped she's mentally handicapped physically handicapped but she was a perfect human being right who was with me every single day and you take it for granted when they leave, you're just like, oh, like I miss that spirit. I miss that feeling of just like 
perfection sitting here. And I think it's the same thing now with Dave not here. Like, man, like I miss that, like being around greatness every day, being around someone who can, in the middle of like the hardest times, like times where it's just like would crush any normal human, walking with a smile on his face, like, whew. I remember we'd come in here and we'd talk after work and he would talk about all the things, the working on all the things. And I just get so overwhelmed, like, how are we going to do this? Like, I can't handle this weight anymore. He just smiles like, we'll get it, we'll get it. Let's keep moving forward, we're gonna get it. And I think that those are times I would have broken under the pressure and under the stress. And because of him, I was able to keep going because he had faith and just like, no, we, like this isn't us, Russell. This is from God. This is something bigger than us. I can tell you there is nothing, there's nothing been better in my life than having the opportunity of, of being involved in helping change other people. I love the passion that exists. When you go out and you do everything you possibly can to have an impact in the lives of other people, because as it goes from one life, it goes to the next life and to the next life and to the next, and all of a sudden, what you've started doing, it may have been real small, and all of a sudden it begins to, to grow. And then as it get, continues to grow, the impact that it has on people changes everything. And he's had perfect optimism every single time. Like, no, like we're gonna do this. I mean, there's, there's the legal pressures, there's the tactical pressures, like you have no idea thing after thing after thing after thing after thing where I just wanted to walk away so many times and it was Dave coming and saying no this is not your mission Russell or my mission this is God's mission what we're doing is bigger than just a funnel we're changing people's lives in so many areas and so many aspects you cannot stop you have to keep going we'll get this I'm here for you what can I take off your plate what can I take off your plate and he literally you know come look at my burden and take more off pile on his own shoulders so I could keep doing what I'm supposed to do and I'm eternally grateful for him. I'm grateful that I bumped into him. I'm grateful for every reason we connected. I'm grateful that he believed in me. I'm grateful that he believed me more than I believed in myself. I'm grateful that he stepped up to bat for me over and over and over. And I, I'm grateful that when I was drowning, he would pull me out of the water. I couldn't, I struggled to move forward when I couldn't, when I lost faith in my own mission, my own self. He was there reminding me who I was and who my calling was. You just want to give more. And as you have that opportunity of giving more, you receive so much from Russell, you just want to give back to him as much as you can. When I would forget about what was important in life, he'd remind me of, of God and of Christ and why all this stuff we're doing doesn't actually matter, that he was, you know, these are all things that we're doing to, to bring more glory to him. And even him during his darkest time, he's going through suffering and pain and not just the physical suffering. Like I can't even imagine suffering to tell your, your wife and your kids if I've got a brain tumor and like, my life's gonna change and, and like all these things, like all the suffering he had to go through and saying, but it's okay, I will do it. If it brings one person closer to him, I was blessed to have him, to have greatness around me every single day and I will miss it. I thought a chance to be reunited with him again Sunday. Um, and I just hope for all of you guys that, um, first off, that you can find something like that in your life to have around you. And number two, and probably more importantly, is to be that person for somebody else. Again, we're all on our own hero's journey, but at the same time, there are times when you're called to be the ally in someone's journey. Sometimes you're called to be the guide in someone's journey. Sometimes, oh, and you know, heaven forbid that you get called to be the 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 uh, the enemy in someone's. Don't be that person ever. But um, just understanding that, yeah, like all of us want a day, but also all of us can be a day for somebody else. And so, when you do that, like it's crazy. Like we had. For today's funeral, I mean, the chapel was, was I think it was seated for 700 people, 750 people, and it was packed. The chapel was completely packed. And then we Zoomed on Zoom. I mean, there, was, there were well over a thousand people who watched his funeral live, which is amazing for for a man who, who lived his life of service, who wasn't the face of it all, who wasn't out there, but people knew him because, um, because what he did um, resonated and changed so many other people's lives. As I was about to click record this morning, there was this talk that popped in my head and there's this quote, and I don't know why I need to tell you this quote, but I've heard it in my head a bunch of times. I think it probably has to do with um, those who are struggling with this. Um, and I understand it, like death is hard, it's scary. And there's always the question of like, why? And why not, like, if we did all the things right, like Dave was healthy, Dave was following God, like why does this have to happen? And um, anyway, this is the quote that is from a talk, uh, one of my favorite talks actually, it's um, a guy named uh, Jeffrey R. Holland. And uh, this is a talk when I was on my mission 20 years ago that changed my life. The talk is called A High Priest of Good Things to Come. And if you want to Google it, you can watch the whole talk. It's, um, it's powerful. This part sounds so emotional. 
trust God and believe and believe in good things to come. And he goes on to say, he said, some blessings come soon, some blessings come late, and some don't come until heaven. Those who embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, they come. And so, um, to kind of end this part before I hand over to the to the funeral, um, that was my thought. Just, you know, I think all of us were hoping and praying for a blessing that Dave was going to be healed and be back to normal. It was going to be amazing. And I think, uh, again, I kind of started with like, Dave was invincible. Of course he was going to be fine. And when it wasn't, it was hard, but like, I think it's understanding, like, it says here, like, some blessings come soon, some blessings come late. Some don't come into heaven. For those who embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, they come. And uh, that's the message I want to leave with you guys. Again, Dave said if it brings one person closer to Christ, it was worth it. He came out with cancer. Like, it was amazing. Um, people from every faith, every denomination reached out. Um, David told me, he's like, he's like, my Muslim friends messaged me. They're praying for me. My Jewish friends were doing it. He's like, I had friends who were agnostic who were praying just in case. I had friends who were atheists who didn't believe in God who came back and started. I had friends who hadn't prayed in years who started praying. He's like, this is what it's about. I can't thank you all enough who might be listening to this. Um, I think that's been the most bizarre thing for me um, during this whole thing is, uh, dang it. during this whole thing, I, I can't believe uh, literally the hundreds of not even thousands of people who have been so kind. And um, if you happen to have already known this and you're listening to this, I thank you. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy ride, but I am so thankful for people. And so uh, for all of you guys, like, for the day to go through this in vain, um, let this experience bring you closer to your God. Um, fall on your knees, say a prayer, um, remember him, remember your mission, remember that, that we're not just here for us, we're here for something bigger, we're here for a mission, and you're here to serve other people who have missions, and so be the ally in their, in their journey, take the weight off their shoulders, and in your journey, Pursue it, even though it's hard. Um, and when it gets too heavy, fall on your knees and pray to God. Ask Him for help. And sometimes when the trials don't go the way that you want them to, then um, again, remember this quote, some blessings come soon, some come late, and some don't come until heaven. I know it can be frustrating and, and hard, but um, there's the, there's the, a bigger, something bigger than we I think, understand or see, obviously. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know this is a different than traditional podcast, but I hope you got some value from it and got something. Um, I appreciate you all. I'm grateful for the opportunity I have to serve you as a community. I'm grateful for Dave who helped build what we have here. Uh, most of you guys wouldn't be listening to this. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be part of this community. You wouldn't be successful entrepreneurship wasn't for the fact that Dave sacrificed so much um, for all of us. And I'm grateful for him. I love him. I miss him. I cannot wait to see him again someday. And again, I was so honored that his family asked me to speak at his funeral. And with their permission, I'm going to play my little session. I think it's 10 or 15 minutes long. Um, kind of tell today's stories. You know the story of how we met. We'll hear stories, um, some of the fun, crazy adventures um, that we had along the way. Thank you guys so much. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Um, first off, what an honor to be with you guys in debt. I had a chance to talk about my best friend. <laughs> um, Dave wasn't just a good guy. I believe he was one of the best people who's ever been on this planet. Um, I don't mean that lightly. I've had a chance to see the ripple effect of what's been created and happens because of the life he lived. We see it in this room here, but it's felt literally by millions of people around the world. And um, if Dave heard me say that, he would be super annoyed that I was bringing attention to him. Um, and so, just to make sure, uh, it reminds me of a, a story a couple years ago. He broke his neck, and he was in his bed with a big neck cast on, and so he was away from the office for like a week or two, and then he came back in, and his big neck got cast on, big smile on his face as he's running in, and first thing, he, we're in the middle of something, we're always in the middle of something, and he grabbed his phone, and he started a Facebook Live, and started talking to all these people, and he's going on talking for two or three minutes and people are popping in from all around the world and they're seeing Dave with the neck brace on and he's talking and so excited and the comments are like what's wrong with your neck what's going on and finally he notices that everybody's so concerned about him he's like oh I broke my neck I'm fine let's go and he kept going for your thought now yes the stupid neck collar I have on I had surgery this last week on my neck everything's fine don't worry about that and I feel like that's probably how David would feel about a lot of this it's just like you guys let's go come on keep moving forward um I'm gonna quote 
some superhero movies twice in this talk. Uh, we talked a lot about superheroes, me and him. Um, we all wanted to be superheroes. He got to dress up at one. You guys have seen the, uh, the shield and the cape and everything there, then Captain America. But um, I was putting my thoughts down last night. I kept thinking about um, the movie Avengers Endgame. At the end of the movie, uh, I don't want to spoiler alert, but Iron Man dies. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the coolest things about that is that Iron Man captured himself on a hologram and he came back after his funeral to talk to his kids and stuff. And there's a quote from that that he said that sounded like something Dave would say if he was here. And uh, he said, don't feel bad about this. Part of the journey is the end. And as hard as that is, it's, it's true for all of us. And, um, and so I wanted to, just, I was thinking about Dave's journey, specifically the, the journey I was able to have with him, which was so special for me. And I just want to share a couple of the things that, um, that I learned from him. Um, the first thing is that, uh, those who know Dave, if he saw something he wanted, he just went and got it. Uh, the way I met Dave was kind of similar. We were, at, uh, it was a seminar around California we were doing and me and Stu McLaren were doing this event and we had a couple of speakers and Stu had this great idea, like, Hey, we could get all the attendees to pay for all of our meals while we're here. And so he put these sign up sheets in the back of the room. And the first thing he said day number one of the event is, hey, if you want to go out to eat with the speakers, go to the back and you can sign up to take them out to lunch or dinner. And I had never met Dave this time. He ran to the back, grabbed my sheet, and filled out breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day of the event. And, and so I had every meal with Dave. And um, that's, that's how I fell in love with Dave. Again, 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 again. And I uh, really quickly found and he shared so many common things and beliefs. And um, for some reason, I don't know what we started a friendship and just continue on that line of just like, he saw what he wanted and he wanted, he'd just go for it. Like we had these crazy conversations. We'd be in a meeting one day. We were on um, ClickFunnels. We were, we were getting close to like being at 50,000 subscribers, a big number we were all striving towards. And we'd hired the Harmon brothers to make this video. And like, we should do a big launch around the video. So we're just brainstorming. And again, I'm just throwing dumb ideas against the wall. I'm like, hey, we should, um, we should follow these influencers here. And we could rent out Boise State football stadium. We'll play football. And then, uh, oh, what if we like got bubble soccer balls? And Dave's like, what if we like set a Guinness Book World Record, had the biggest bubble soccer ball game in the history of the world? And I'm just like laughing and laughing. And three weeks later, we set the world record for the largest bubble soccer game in the world. Um, the best thing about Dave, like being around him, like he gave me the ability to dream big because I knew whatever we came up with, he would figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah, he saw something he wanted and he figured out how to get it done. Um, in fact, I think if he was here today, he saw this many people in the room and all the people on Zoom, you'd be annoyed that we weren't trying to sell something. <laughs> so with his permission, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next thing I knew about Dave is he was always up for anything. Um, some of you guys know the crazy things that we did. I remember one day I'd been like planning for like three or four months to do this long water fast. I was only drink water for a week. And um, he found out about like Sunday night, I was starting Monday. And instead of like preparing or asking any questions, he showed up Monday, he's like, I'm doing it with you. I'm like, have you thought through this? Like, this is not, and he's like, no, I'm in. And we, he did a five day water fast with zero, like not a 30 seconds notice, just started and went with it and did the whole thing. Um, one day he showed up, um, one of our friends, Eric Cafferty challenges this thing called the one chip challenge. And he brings you this chip in a coffin, one chip in a coffin because it's so bad. Dave shows up at our house, like five or six of these things. And we sat there and we ate this chip. And I remember like, it hurt so bad. Mike, like, like I was dying and he just wanted to beat me. And so like, while I'm on the ground crying and like my mouth hurts so bad, my guts and my, and my, and he sat there and waited till we all tapped out and gave up. And then he like finally at the end won. And um, <laughs> just all the time, one day we were in the middle, it was right before our big event and we were so stressed out and so anxious. And then I see him walk out of the office, the biggest, you know, Dave smile, but this was bigger than normal. And um, he walks in the kitchen and they like text me, like, hey Russell, we need to meet you in the kitchen. And I walk in and They'd set up a pie duel and there was like plastic on the ground. They had pies and we dueled. We like stood back to back and we walked in and I was like, why are we doing this? He's like, it's March 14th. It's pie day. We have to have a pie duel. I'm like, of course we do. And I cannot believe we just did that. We had a pie duel. He was always up for just anything. And he made life fun, even in the most stressful, crazy, um, crazy times. Third thing I learned from him is that he showed up consistently for everybody. I remember being sick at home, having a flu and all of a sudden hear the doorbell ring and Dave's there with some of the kids and he's got a box of supplements and things and all this stuff and just showed up then um, over and over and over again. When Todd and I were trying to plan ClickFunnels 2.0, I flew out to Atlanta and I was, in there, I was there meeting with Todd and 
they found out we were meeting and he jumped in a plane and like a few hours later, he's there with us, like there to like, to be part of it. He always showed up. He was always there to support, to lead, to guide, uh, and to be part of it. Um, and the last thing I want to share is, and this is one's probably the thing that I'm most impressed with him of all things, but Dave was a man of values. And I know that all of us, especially Dave, has so many things that we value, right? We value our family, our business, our work, our health, like all the things we, we value. Um, but yesterday I, I was listening to something and Jordan Peterson said something interesting. He said that, um, that all of us have a hierarchy of values and he says that the thing that you value the most becomes your God. And for most people, it's, it's usually not God, it's something else. But if you look at Dave's life, the thing that he valued the most was God, which is so rare today. Um, and you saw in every part of his life, it's the way he made decisions. Like I, prior to him coming and moving to Idaho and assuming stuff, I pitched him on a million different crazy ideas that were, um, may not have been, you know, just idea after idea. And I kept trying to like, you move to Boise, come hang out, like we can work on these projects together. Um, and it wasn't until we talked about click funnels and he said, I remember him telling me, he said, there's something special about this thing. This is being led by God. What we are doing, like, this is something bigger. And because he believed in that, then he was willing to go all in and be part of um, part of this thing. Um, and I watched him grow um, with us over the years from coming in at one level where he was helping the affiliates to becoming head of business development and becoming a partner and then becoming our CEO and running the entire, uh, the entire operation. Um, his number one value in life was God and he saw it in all aspects of his life. Shortly after was Carrie and then the kids. It's just so powerful to see a man who, who believes that way and lives that way. And I still remember the day when he was in the office, um, after he got the call, they found out he had the tumor. I knew he was on a call. And afterwards, I looked over and I couldn't see him. And so I stood up to walk um, over to see if he was still there. And um, this giant of a man was, <laughs> on his knees. He could have been running, crying, hiding, whatever. And the first thing he did is petition his heavenly father. And then afterwards told us, we've heard him say so many times today, he said, if cancer brings more people closer to Christ, that I will do it. Be able to submit himself and his will to God's will is why I respect Dave so much. Uh, he's got closer and closer to the end and um, he knew things were kind of turning. Um, we had an amazing night we had a chance to spend and um, talk to Dave and pray with him and it was amazing. And then two or three days later, I was on a Zoom call or something and also my phone lit up and it was Dave. And I was like, I said he was calling and I was so scared because I didn't know if Oh, just all the emotions and fears and everything. So I quickly got off my call and I called him back. And um, the boys answered the phone, handed it to Dave, and he looked at me, he's laying in his bed, the biggest smile in his face. He's like, I'm about to take a nap. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm probably not going to wake up. Um, I just want to know I love you and I'm going to see you in heaven, but not too soon. And I was like, what? And he's like, good night. I love you. And hung up. And I got a snapshot on my phone of that, that last moment. And, the smile, just knowing that, like, I'm going to see him in heaven again, <laughs> but not too soon. <laughs> to kind of close, um, I was thinking about ever since, especially the last two or three weeks, like, I've been thinking about this and Dave and just everything. A lot of scriptures been going to my head, and the scripture I was thinking about today was the principle of the, or the parable of the talents. I'm sure most of you have heard where um, the master came and gave one person five talents, one person two talents, one person, one talent, and had them go out in the world and see what they would do with it. And Dave was, Dave was the guy that got the five talents. He took these things and he went out there and he, he multiplied them. He came back to the master and what the master um, told this guy in the scriptures is I'm sure the exact same thing that our Savior Jesus Christ told Dave. We saw him again last week. So what he said, he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. As this got closer and closer, I kept thinking in my head, like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. So all you guys felt the same way. And that brought me to one more superhero story. And then I'll be done in Dr. Strange. There's a moment in that movie, if you've seen it, where um, Dr. Strange was his mentor and She's about to pass away. She's frozen time, slowed it down as slow as she possibly can. And Dr. Strange says, I'm not ready. The mentor says, because no one ever is. We don't get to choose our time. Death is what gives life meaning. Know your days are numbered. Your time is short. The only reason our lives have meaning is because there's an end. If it wasn't for the end, there'd be no purpose. 
in the scripture it rang in my head as soon as um, I got the news about Dave. It's in the book of Corinthians. since when Paul wrote the Corinthians, he was talking to these people about Christ and how he had won the victory over death for them. And the quote that kept, I kept hearing in my head the moment I heard about Dave passing was this. I gave us Paul writing to Corinthians. He said, um, O death, where is, thy, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because of Christ, we know that we will have a chance to be with him again be together again as families, as friends. Um, if I could say one last thing to Dave right now, before I receive again in heaven, it would be, thank you for being my example, for being my ally, for being my guide and being my friend. Dave, you did it, man. I love you. Can't wait to see you soon. I say things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.